8.3 vector parametric and symmetric equations of a line in R3. So like I mentioned previously, lines in three space are pretty similar to lines in two space. There's just a few little different things that can happen. And the first is that in three space you can have an infinite number of normals. Think about it as if my pen or pencil was a line in three space and I wanted to make something perpendicular to it. You can see that I could put it anywhere around the line or down the line. I would have so many different things that could be perpendicular to this. So there's an infinite number of normals. Otherwise, the work is the same as in two space. So we identify the vector r as r1, that's just your point, plus t times the direction vector. So nothing new here, except now we're going to have three coordinates. So find the vector equation of a line passing through 1, 0, minus 1. So that's just a point that has a direction vector. Here's our direction vector of 1, 2, 3. So very easily put, all you have to write is the line will be 1, 0, minus 1, plus parameter t or s, whatever you want to use times 1, 2, 3, where t is an element of real numbers. Now, you're often asked whether or not a point is on the line. So in this case, does a point q, 3, 4, 2 lie on this line? Well, in order to do that, we need to state what the um, parametric equations are. So we're going to look at the parametrics, so that's x in terms. Now, when you're doing these, it's probably a good idea for you to think about saying what you're doing. I'm finding a parametric equation. I'm finding a symmetric equation. So you need to be able to remember what these things mean, because it's all new lingo for you. So be careful, and like I said, it's probably a good idea for you to think a little bit about what you're saying. So I have x is 1 plus 1t, y is 0 plus 2t, z is minus 1 plus 3t. So if this is on the line, I'm going to substitute in x, y, and z into here and solve for t and see if the t is the same for all of them. So let's say um, I plug in t is, or x is 3 here. So if I put in 3 here, that would mean t has to be equal to 2. So if x is equal to 3, t is equal to 2. So and if I plug in 2 here, do I get 4? So I plug in 2, and I would get 4, right? I get 0 plus 2 times 2. So then y is equal to 0 plus 2 times 2, and that one works. If I put in t is 2 here, I would get z is minus 1 plus 6. z equals minus 1 plus 6 equals 5. And right away, you can see that, um, no, I don't want it to be 5. I want z to be equal to 2. So, therefore, not on the line. Very simple to do. Okay, so... Parametric equations of the line through x, y, z with direction vector a, b, c are x equals x1 plus t8, same thing, right? y2 plus t, b, z2 plus t, c, t is an element of real numbers. So I just stated that in terms of just some variables so you see it without numbers. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is parametric and symmetric equations. So if we have the line x, y, z, so this is in component form, you can write it out like this, equals x0, y0, z0 plus t times abc, t is an element of real numbers, then the parametric equations, obviously x plus x equals x0 plus ta, y equals y0 plus tb, okay, I'm not not going to read that for you. And then to solve for the symmetric equations, all we do is isolate t. So we do x minus x0 and we divide by a and so on. And then we set them all equal to each other. And this is kind of an important way to find out all kinds of things about your line. 
So for example, if we have the vector, we asked to find the vector, parametric, and symmetric equations of the line that passes through 240, 507, and does this point Q lie on the line? Well, the first thing we need to do, and I know you're probably saying this, is that we need a direction vector. Okay, so find direction vector. We can't, we've got lots of points. It's just like trying to find a line without knowing the slope. You have to find the slope. So we're going to say P1, P2, direction vector, will be equal to 5 minus 2 is 3, 0 minus 4 is minus 4, and 7 minus 0 is 7. Okay, so now we have a direction vector and we can give the vector equation. So the vector equation is going to be, mm, let's use 2, 4, 0. Remember, you could use either one plus parameter t times my direction vector. So you should be really good at this by now. So this is my vector equation now. And that was the first thing we were asked to find. Now, to find the parametric equations, remember you're finding x, y, and z in terms of the parameter t. So, I'm sure you can do these without me showing you, but it's 2 plus 3t for x. y is going to be 4 minus 4t. And z is going to be 0 plus 7t, or just 7t. Okay, so now we've got the parametric equations. That's this one. Parametric equations. So if I want to do the symmetric equations now, I'm going to um, write each of, the, of these in terms of t and set them all equal to each other. So I have t is equal to x minus 2 over 3. So what I want you to think about while you're writing these out is which which one of these numbers is the coordinate for my point and which one is a coordinate from my my direction vector because you're going to have to kind of deassemble these and reassemble them, right? So you need to know wh which ones, like we can see now that the point is going to be the negative of this and here's the x coordinate of my direction vector. So if I do y, I would get t is equal to um, y subtract 4 divided by minus 4. And for z, I would get z, well, we have z is 7t, so t is equal to z over 7. Now, you would note here, if you were trying to find the coordinates of the point, you see our point was 0, so we have z plus 0 really here, right? That's in the ghost it's a ghost number because you need to have a you need to have a, a number for your z coordinate. Okay, so now that we have these, we're going to set them all equal to each other. So x minus 2 over 3, because they're all equal to t, that means they're all equal to each other. And there we go, z over 7. Let's put a little line over that so you know it's not a 2. And the question is, um, does Q lie on this line? So we have X, Y, and Z here, and if we plug them in here, that would mean that each of these little terms must be equal to each other. So if I put in minus 4 minus 2 over 3, you can see I'm going to get negative 2, right? So now if I do 12 minus 4 um, divided by negative 4, that's going to be negative 2. And finally, z is minus 14 over 7. So I get minus 2 is equal to minus 2 is equal to minus 2. And that means that, yes, therefore q is on the line. If you don't get the same numbers, then it's not. Pretty simple. Okay, I think the hardest thing about this whole section is just remembering what parametric, symmetric, vector equation, what all these things mean, and what you're being asked for. 
Okay, find the symmetric equations of the line through a 1, 2, 3, b 2, minus 1, and 3. So again, we have two points. We have no direction. So first thing, find your direction vector, a, b. So 2 minus 1 is 1, and minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3, and 3 minus 3 is 0. So there's my direction vector. What is the... Um, to find the symmetric equations, I'm going to have to find the um, vector equation first. So the vector equation is going to be my point. Oh, <laughs> I broke two in a row. That's a record. One, two, three, plus... I just had to mute my computer there. It was dinging on me. One minus three and zero. Okay, so my parametric equation is going to be x equals 1 plus t. So again, parametric in terms of the parameters, 2 minus 3t, and z is going to be equal to 3. So I have those. Now I'm going to find the symmetric equations. So I'm going to do it all in one step here. So I'm going to say x minus 1 equals, that was t, so y minus 2 divided by minus 3. So once you get the hang of this, you can do it without doing um, step by step. And the final one, though, I have z equals 3. So I don't have a t to solve for here. So I have to leave that one separately. z is equal to 3. So I can't make it equal to this. All my, all my um, values for z are going to be 3. So any point on this line will have z equals 3. Okay, the next thing um, that comes up in this exercise as well is determining direction cosines. So a direction cosine is simply um, an angle that helps you tell which angle the vector makes with the x, y, and z axes. So we're going to use an example here where we have vector AB, which is 1 minus 3 and 0. And we have that cos theta is, this is the dot product of the two vectors divided by the magnitude of the vectors. So in this case, the vector that we're going to be using for the x, y, and z axes is simply going to be the unit vector for the axes. So if I'm doing the x-axis, then my unit vector would be 1, 0, 0 because I'm on the x-axis, no y, no z. On the y-axis, obviously we have y but no x and z, and z-axis, no x and y. So let's do the x-axis. So we're going to say cos theta is going to be equal to vector AB now. So we're using the same vector for all of them. So I have 1, minus 3, and 0. And we're going to dot that. Oh, I didn't leave lots of room here, did I? 1, 0, 0. Divided by the magnitude of AB, which is going to be 1 squared plus minus 3 squared, which is square root of 10. Okay. So if I dot this now, I would have 1 times 1, which is 1, plus 0, plus 0. So I'm only concerned with this number here over the magnitude. So I have 1 over the square root of 10. And that gives me a theta of approximately 72 degrees. So if we go to the y-axis now, and I did a little schematic here to show you exactly what we're doing. So now I'm going to try to find this pink angle here. So this is 72 degrees from the x-axis. This is my vector I went 1 minus 3 to get me to here. So this is vector AB. I'll write it here, even though it should be in green. So this is vector AB, and you can see the different angles that we're getting. So with the y-axis, we have cos theta, and again we have 1 minus 3, 0, dotted with 0, 1, 0 over the magnitude of um, the same one. So we have the square root of 10. And both of these are times 1, right? Because the magnitude of the 
sorry, this one here is 0 plus 1 plus 0, which is, you know, you could put that in here, but it, it's not necessary, and I didn't even write it in there. So you can see when I dot this, the only thing that's going to matter is the minus 3. So I have minus 3 over square root 10, and that gives me a theta of approximately, uh, let me see here, y-axis, 162 degrees. And if I do the z axis, I'm doing the same thing again here. So I have cos theta is 1 minus 3, 0 dotted with 0, 0, 1 divided by the magnitude of the two multiplied together. So it's the square root of 10 again times the square root of 1. And when I dot this one, you can see that I'm going to get 0, 0, and 0. So I'm, I want to know where is cos theta equals 0. And that's going to give you 90 degrees. So this is my 90 degree angle here. Okay, so that shows you that if you want to find any direction cosine or direction angle, all you have to do is do... Um, a, so with the x-axis, I'm just going to do 1 over the magnitude of the, um, the vector, this vector, and minus 3. So we have minus 3 over the magnitude of it, and 1 over the magnitude, or sorry, not 1, but uh, 0 over the magnitude of the vector. And you can look up those little formulas. Uh, I guess I could write them out for you here. So if... Um, Oh, okay, so if I said theta, or alpha, beta, and gamma are the angles that OP makes with the x, y, and z axis, makes with x, y, z axis. This is all in your textbook. Um, and OP is A, B, C, then cos of alpha is going to be a over the magnitude of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. So this is, you know, they give you all these formulas, but it's really quite logical. And sometimes it's better if you don't see these formulas and you figure it out with a, a, an example. It seems to make more sense, right? So magnitude a squared plus b squared plus c squared and cos gamma is going to be c over the square the magnitude of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Okay, so that's your direction cosines. What have I got next here? Oh right. Do these equations represent the same line? Okay, so how are we going to figure that out? We have line 1, and sometimes they're written like this, right? L1, L2. You'll see that in your textbook. So what I need to find out, first of all, if they're the same line, think about what would make something be the same line. It would mean they'd have to have the same slope, and both their, their points have to be on the same line, right? So... What you want to know is, what is a point on this line, and what is the slope or the direction vector for this line? And remember, we were looking at those when we wrote out these symmetric equations, and I said, okay, well, if you look down here, maybe I'll, I'll put that in pink here, these numbers here represent your direction vector, right? These are all direction vectors coordinates of the direction vector, I should say. So that means that direction vector 1 here is going to be 2, 3, minus 5. And direction vector 2 here is going to be 4, minus 6, and 10. Okay, so what is a point on L1? So point, why am I doing this in pink? Let's do it in a different color. So the point here is going to be the opposite signs of these, right? Because remember, we brought them across an equal sign and changed their sign. 
So a point on this one is going to be 5 minus 4 and minus 1. And a point here is going to be minus 1, 1 and minus 3. Now, you have to be careful when you're doing these to make sure that they've been written in the correct order, like x, y, z. I think that shows up in the next example I'm going to do anyway, but it just made me think of it. So minus 1, 1 and minus 3. That's my other point. Okay, so now we take a look at the direction vectors. 2, 3, minus 5, and 4, minus 6, and 10. Are these lines, these direction vectors, parallel? Are, do they have the same, like, are they a scalar multiple? That's really what I'm trying to say here. And you should see right away that this is twice that one, and this is, oops, we had a, a little sign mistake here. Yeah, this should have been a minus 4... I forgot to, I, I wrote it out incorrectly. This was minus four to start with. So that gives me minus four here. Okay, so now you can see this is minus two. This vector here is minus two times this one. So they have the same direction vectors. So this one and this one are the same. So that means they're either parallel or the same line. Therefore, parallel or same line. Okay, so now all I have to do is show or prove that this, this point here is also on this line. So if I plug this point into this line or this point into this line, then they should get the same ratios, right? Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, so let's try five minus four, one into this line here. So I'm going to put in um, five plus one over minus four, and I have minus four minus one over minus six, and I have minus one plus three over 10. And when I simplify this, that's going to give me 6 over negative 4, or minus 3 halves. And this one is going to give me minus 5 over minus 6. That's 5, 6. So right away, this isn't working out. And this gives me 1 fifth. So no, they're not the same line. Not the same line. But they are parallel. Okay, so that's that's how you would test it. Now you could also have tested, like I said, you could have put this point in here. So if I put in minus one here, I would have had, let's do that one. So I have minus one minus five over two. Is that equal to one plus four over three? And is that equal to minus three plus one over minus five? And I think you can see right away, this is going to be minus three. This is going to be five thirds. And this is going to be two fifths. Okay, and they're not equal. So that's how you check. Okay, so the last one I'm going to do for you is a homework question from um, your textbook on page 450, number 9. And it says, determine the value of k for which the direction vectors are perpendicular. Oh, wow. Remember, perpendicular, what does perpendicular mean? And you should be thinking, every time you see this, you should be thinking, dot product equals zero. That was the most important thing of the dot product, right? Dot product can tell you if two things are perpendicular, two vectors are perpendicular, not things. Okay, so I want to check not the points, but the direction vectors. So what are the direction vectors for these two lines? So the first one here is easy. It's k2 and k minus one. So I'm going to write that out, k2 and k minus 1. And I'm going to dot that with this direction vector. So this is the one where I said, you know, you've got to be careful about the order. Don't just start writing out numbers here because this is x, this is z. So this is x and the z is 1. And what's the y going to be? Hopefully you know it's going to be 0. 
and I want that to be equal to zero. And now the question becomes really simple, right? So I have, I do the dot product, so I have minus 2k and 2 times 0, that's nothing. And then k minus 1 times 1, so I have plus k minus 1 equals 0. So minus k is equal to 1, so that means k is equal to minus 1. <laughs> I'm going to say k equals 1. No, we have to divide by minus 1, and that's your answer here. And that's question 9 from page 450. You probably will be assigned that for homework or maybe just wanted to know. Okay, so that ends um, the lesson on finding equations of lines. Next lesson will be equations of planes. And um, I'll get to that shortly. And I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. Please subscribe if you haven't and encourage your friends. Tell everybody about the channel so that we can make it grow and help a lot of people. Bye for now.